Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green land ramp deck featuring Azusa, Lost But Seeking, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 3-mana 1-2 legendary human monk, saying we may play 2 additional lands on each of our turns, so we can play 3 lands total, which is incredibly powerful in a deck that has a sufficient number of lands, and once we factor in all the dual-faced cards, we have about 60 lands total in our deck, which may seem like a lot, but is very much necessary if we want to get the most out of Azusa's ability. Then of course we're going to run out of lands in hand pretty quickly, so another very important interaction alongside Azusa is replaying fetch lands out of our graveyard. And we have three ways to do that, with Crucible Worlds, a 3-mana artifact, Ramonup Excavator is the same ability stabled onto a 2-3 creature, and at 6 mana we have Ancient Green Warden, which is a 5-7 with reach, lets us replay lands from our graveyard, and also doubles the landfall triggers on our various permanents, which can also come in handy. And then alongside three ways of replaying lands out of the graveyard, we also have three fetch lands. We have access to Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, and Terramorphic Expanse. And those are probably the three most important lands in the deck, just because that gives us access to that powerful interaction of replaying lands out of the graveyard. Azusa lets us play up to three lands each turn, so we can just replay the same fetch land out of the graveyard over and over, sacrifice it, get one of our 30 snow-covered forests, and just uh, ramp us for a whole lot so we can easily play all these expensive creatures at the top end. And then, in addition to Azusa, we have a few more ways to play extra lands. We have Dryad of the Elysian Grove, which also fixes our mana. Wayward Surtooth also lets us play an extra land, and eventually turns into a 5-5 creature that can attack and block with the City's Blessing. And at 4 mana, the most important one by far is Oracle of Moldaya, which lets us play an extra land, lets us play with the top card of our library revealed, and we may play lands from the top of our library. And with over half our deck being lands, with Oracle and Azusa, we can play up to 4 lands each turn. We also have access to a few shuffle effects, so you can imagine the card advantage that those two can provide together. And then we also have access to a few tutor effects to find Oracle and maybe the Raman Up Excavator to assemble some of those synergies. Then we also have Augur of Autumn from Midnight Hunt, which lets us play lands of the top, and eventually once we enable Coven, also lets us play creatures. So those are all very important creatures in the deck. So let's take a look at the other creatures. Not too many 1 and 2 drops, because sure we could play a card like Lenor Elves to play Azus on turn 2, but given that we want to play a high density of lands also to get the most out of cards like Oracle of Moldaya and our Augur of Autumn, so we don't end up finding a Lenor Elves on top that we're unable to play, which wouldn't be very helpful, I just skipped the one mana accelerants like our Boreal Grazer and Lenor Elves. And then uh, Lotus Cobra is still quite powerful because it generates mana whenever we play a land, and of course we can play a ton of lands in the same turn, so that's definitely still worth it. Can also double the ability with our Ancient Green Warden, which could come up. And then Tangled Florahedron is technically a 2-mana accelerant, but for the most part we're going to play it as a tap land, and we have the flexibility of playing it as a 1-1. One -one. Then at 3 mana we covered most of the creatures already, also have access to Fierce Empath, which can tutor up a creature with mana value 6 or greater and put it into our hand. Also the Shuffle effect can be useful if we have access to Augur of Autumn or Oracle of Moldaya, and we want to get rid of some non-land cards of the top, so we can keep playing lands for free. And then Scute Swarm, also very important win condition, with Landfall making copies of itself, so if we can play a few fetch lands in the same turn, we can quickly assemble an army of Scute Swarms, which will threaten to crash the game. Then at 4 mana, besides Oracle, there's Timeless Witness to return a card from our graveyard to our hand, can also be eternalized for 7 mana, in which case it enters from our graveyard as a 4-4 zombie with the same ability. And then topping off our curve, beside Ancient Green Warden, there's Multani, which has Reach, Trample, and gets plus one plus one for each land we control and each land in our graveyard. And for two mana we can return two lands we control to our hand, to return Multani from our graveyard to our hand, so we can keep getting it back. And actually picking up two lands can be useful if we just want to enable landfall a bunch. Then Ulvenwald Hydra has Reach and Power and Toughness equal to the number of lands we control, and when it enters can search up any land to put on the battlefield tapped. 
Of course, we did lose access to Field of the Dead, which got banned, but even without Field of the Dead, our deck is incredibly powerful, and Hydra has a ton of utility. We've got Kogla, which can fight a creature when it enters, and destroy artifacts or enchantments when it attacks, can even pick up a human to give it indestructible until end of turn, and Azusa is conveniently a human. We have Thorn Mammoth, which can also fight creatures when it enters or another creature enters under our control. We have Cultivator Colossus, which is one of the more powerful creatures in a deck with this many lands, as it can provide a ton of card advantage by letting us play lands and draw more cards whenever we put a land in play. There's Nyxbloom Ancient, which triples the amount of mana we can generate, which is also a ton of fun when we can combine it with the various X spells in the deck. We have Vorinclex Voice of Hunger, which will make it so lands stay tapped on the opponent's side for a turn, whereas we get to double our mana. And then the Tarask, a 10-10 that has haste and ward 10 if we cast it, and when it attacks can fight target creature defending player controls. And of course Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, which can exile two permanents when it's cast, so it can even exile the opponent's lands, even if it gets countered we still get that ability. And then a 10-10 Indestructible that can also mill the opponent out. Then going over the non-creature spells in the deck, at 2 mana there is Druid class, which gains a life whenever we play a land, can be leveled up to play an additional land each turn, so add that one to the list. And then on level 3, which is now cheaper thanks to the alchemy update, we can turn one of our lands into a creature with power toughness equal to the number of lands we control. We've got Explore to play an extra land and draw a card. Nissa's Triumph can search up two basic forests unless we control a Nissa Planeswalker, in which case we can search our library for three of any land and put them into our hand. Thomatic Compass can search up lands with the activated ability and eventually transforms into Spires of Araska, which can prevent a creature from dealing damage. And then we've got a few X spells with Finale of Devastation, which can find any creature in our library or graveyard with mana value X or less and put it on the battlefield. And if X is 10 or more, creatures we control get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn, which certainly comes up in this deck. We've got an Ilias Intervention, which can search our library for X land cards, reveal them and put them into our hand. So we often want to cast this for a big amount, so we can fill our hand full of lands that we can quickly play out, or we can deal twice X damage to each creature with flying. And another X spell is the Ecological Appreciation, which lets us search our library and graveyard for up to four creature cards with different names that have mana value X or less, reveal them. Opponent gets to choose two that we shuffle back and two that we get to put in play. Then Balaget Recovery is mostly a land, but can also be a sorcery to return a card from our graveyard to our hand. Same with the Ambush, which is mostly a land, but could also be used as a fight spell. And then Cultivate was actually close to getting cut, but it's still a nice 2 for 1 that ramps us and puts an extra land in our hand that we can then quickly play out. Then at 4 mana there's Harmonize to draw 3, a nice way to refuel. And at 5 mana, Nissa Vital Force, we can quickly emblem at minus 6, at which point we can draw a card whenever we play a land, which is very powerful in this deck. Nissa who shakes the world to essentially double our mana and make 3-3 three, three creatures. We've got Primal Command, which has a few different modes, but we're usually gonna search up a creature, as well as put target non-creature permanent on top of its owner's library, so we can put a land from the opponent back on top of their deck, so we essentially stone rain them, destroy a land, and make them skip their next draw step, which is very powerful when we're ahead of mana. There's Shared Summons, which can find two different creatures and put them into our hand. So as you can see, we have a lot of ways to tutor up our different creatures to assemble all those combos I mentioned at the beginning. Then Renan 7 can plus one to give us a mulch effect by revealing the top four cards and putting all lands in our hand and the rest into our graveyard. Now we could also be playing cards like Mulch and Winding Way. The reason I did not end up including those, even though they can be nice sources of card advantage to find a bunch of lands which we can then play out, is that we want to avoid including too many low impact cards because once we're going off with cards like Augur of Autumn and Oracle of Moldaya, we want to have as many lands on top of our deck as possible and finding a cantrip when we're in the middle of comboing off with those cards is pretty annoying so that's why I ended up not including those. But then uh, Renan 7 can also minus of course to make a large tree folk token with power toughness equal to the number of lands we control so a ton of synergy there too. Zendikar's Royal makes a 2-2 token whenever we enable landfall and then the deck of many things can provide card advantage if we pay two mana and tap it by either drawing two cards or returning a card at random from our graveyard to our hand. And if we get lucky and roll a 20, could also win the game. We've got Verdant Mastery, which is a very powerful six mana ramp card with the flexibility of casting it for four mana. 
God Pharaoh's statue can slow down the opponent, which is also very effective when we're way ahead of mana. The Immortal Sun as a powerful card draw engine, even though it also shuts down our own planeswalkers. And then Turn Timber Symbiosis can maybe find a powerful creature in the top 7. And then going over the mana base, I'm not going to go over every individual land, but there's a ton of utility lands as you can imagine, so we can spend our mana in the late game if we don't have anything else going on. A few creature lands include a Lair of the Hydra as a great mana sink, Faceless Haven, which is why we're playing 30 snow-covered forests. We also have our Crawling Barons, which is an excellent mana sink, and a few smaller creature lands like Blink Moth Nexus. And then ways to destroy opposing lands can also be very interesting, like Field of Ruin and especially Ghost Quarter can quickly run the opponent out of lands to fetch up, and if we can replay them out of the graveyard, that can be a powerful engine. And then a few ways to draw cards with cards like Cryptic Caves, We've got the Arch of Araska, which can draw cards with a city's blessing. So again, there's no shortage of ways to spend our mana in the late game. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, facing Halana and Talena. And our hands, okay. Could use a few more lands, but... Uh, we've got the Explorer on two, Azusa into hopefully some of these curve toppers. Ooh, nice Oracle of Moldias, excellent. And then we gotta hope there's a couple lands on top waiting for us. And I could play Oracle right now, try and get immediate value. But if we play Azusa first, there's a chance first that they kill Azusa. And if both survive, I can maybe play like three or four lands next turn off the top before they kill Oracle. A rhythm quite synergistic with the partners, so start by playing Oracle before doing anything else. And then sadly no land on top. And I'll keep Azusa back. Now got for a statue still a pretty good draw. Gonna take five here. And once again, no lands. I could play Cultivator, but it wouldn't do much besides just putting a 7 7 in play. So I think we play a statue, try and slow the opponent down a little bit, and then hope to present some blockers next turn. Could also use the Labyrinth, of course. Opponent's gonna fire up their creature lanes, put some counters on it. Right, this is gonna hurt. Think I take it, just block the 1-1. One, one. Alright, let's make this count. This is better. And then... Could play Vorinclex. Although 7-6 is kind of small on this board. I could Verdant Mastery for 6. And then still play a couple lands out to activate Labyrinth. If I activate Memorial, I find Excavator, but I don't have a fetch line to go with it. And we can play Void. And Thicket, I think I bought him, since I need to play some untapped lands here, so it's not helpful. Scavenger Grounds is. And uh, yeah, I still get to use Labyrinth here. And then we can maybe Chum Block. Opponents likely firing up their creature land once again. It's going to be a ranger class for 4 mana instead. And a wolf maybe getting haste. Nope, still going for the trampling pelt collector. That one we can labyrinth here. Okay, and then final of devastation. Can I present lethal? Don't have access to crater hoof behemoth in my deck, which 
was a decision not to include it, but I think we can still figure out something powerful here. So, do I maybe want to play a Vorinclex first? And then I can still play a Cultivator Colossus afterwards. And take it from there. Alright. And then we can still ambush to kill the partners. And there's a Multani waiting for us. So this seems okay. And then next turn finale should definitely be good enough. Blizzard Brawl to find Vorinclex. Fair enough. Colossus can still block. Does mean access to a little bit less mana next turn. Alright, Galta could have come down with haste from the Rhythm. And if they actually went with haste, I wonder if they had enough for lethal. But Galta's gonna hang back on defense. Now, do I have enough mana to play Multani and finally for at least 10? So let's see. This casts Multani. And then, yeah, I have just enough for finally for 10. So we also get a hasty Multani. And this probably wants to find a big trampler. Thorn Mammoth, I guess, can fight something on the way out. And smash. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Teo, a high toughness deck, and we've got a promising start. Lotus Cobra into Azusa can lead to some fireworks. And then Zendikar's Royal to go wide, Multani to go tall. We've got all angles covered. Can always use Blast Zone to deal with the Speaker of the Heavens at some point. Okay, time to have some fun. You can activate Castle and play Multani. Not bad. And then next turn Zendikar's Royal make a couple tokens. So now we've got a big trampler to pressure Teo. I'm here to protect you. Yes. All of you. Alright, Flumph you know. hits us for four, but Multani has reach. Both get to draw. And time for Zendikar's Royal. And then I'm most likely gonna cycle Tranquil Thicket here. Still grows Multani, because it's an extra land in Graveyard. Could blow a Blast Zone to deal with Speaker. Probably doesn't matter too much, but sure. And then we can finish off Teo, go face. And even in the event of a sweeper here, we can still pick up Multani again from our graveyard, which then also enables Zendikar's Royal. Gift of Estates, pretty easy to enable when playing against Azusa. Opponent gets to find three planes. 
Do they have an answer for Multani is a question. Helid's intervention deals with the Royal. And Druid class I should be able to activate right away. Level up. And then level up. Careful how we tap our mana. Probably didn't want to leave the castle as the land we animate, but that's fine. Alright, and that does it. So quick and brutal game here against Teo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Nicol Bolas, a god pharaoh, so can expect quite a bit of interaction. Luckily, they cannot interact easily with our lands. My hand is okay, could use a few more lands, but shared summons, finding any of our creatures is quite powerful. And I can probably play this one tapped, given that we don't lack expensive top ends. And then Augur plus Azusa. Also a lot of fun if we can combine the two. Right, so should be able to resolve Azusa unless there's a wash away. Play a few lands. And yeah, now it's all about hitting our land drops, keep ramping. And we already have our finishers taken care of. Even if they kill Azusa, we still got our value by putting those two extra lands in. And not too expensive to replay for a ramp deck. So we have options. Could replay Azusa, play lands. So we maybe save our Augur until we can play multiple lands over the top, or I can just go Augur, play land over the top. Don't think I want to share summons. So yeah, Augur seems fine. And Voids. Probably keep Enclave on top. Sure. And pass it back. If Augur survives, great. If not, I'm not too broken up about it. Opponent passes. So... Fine to play Desert. Could also try and resolve a Nyxbloom Ancient here. I think I'd rather play Azusa, see if our opponent has a response. And then uh, we'll see what happens next. Can play that as a land, Coggle on top. Okay. Can hit for two. Consign deals with Augur. Well, we got our value, so don't feel too bad about that. Ugin's ineffable. Can maybe deal with Azusa. But again, we got our value. Opponent had to use their treasures, so they're further away from casting Nicol Bolas now. And uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient looks appealing. Can Nyx Bloom. And then can play Augur and Shared Summons. Probably wanted to wait on playing my land actually in case there's a land on top. Our Explorer so didn't get punished. And then Shared Summons. I could cast at instant speed. Although it's not like I need to draw an Explorer, so I feel fine playing this now. And what to get? Ulamog seems like a good one. And another way to play creatures off the top, like Oracle of Moldaya, could be good. Could get a Vorinclex, a Voice of Hunger. Cultivator Colossus, probably not great, since I'm lacking cards in hand to go with it. Yeah, we'll get a Voice of Hunger. And pass it back. So if they kill Nyxbloom Ancients, I can still cast one of my heavy hitters. If they don't, I can pretty much empty my hand. Remorse, I guess, uh, pretty clean solution to Ulamog. Still leaves for Inklex. 
and our set prevents us from drawing. Appreciation can also search our graveyard, but our opponent did actually exile Ulamog, so I won't have access to that anymore. But we do have access to the top of our deck. And uh, well, let's double tap Q, see how much mana we can generate. That's quite a lot of mana. Probably enough to figure out something powerful. Might want to start with Vorinclex, which makes even more mana. Good friends with Nyxbloom Ancients. And then... Appreciation for how much? So, I guess X equals... 9 is a good number. Opponent knows about the appreciation in our hands. And it's just gonna throw in the towel, understandably. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Amara, Soul of the Accord. And my hand seems fine. Nothing special, but I like to see at least four lands in my opening hands. I'm gonna get this tapped recovery out of the way. Opponent's got to turn one Lanner Elves, that's fine. The next turn we get to play all the lands in our hands, pretty much. And our opponent's keeping up with a ramp here, turn one Elves, turn two Cultivate. But I think we're gonna go a little bit bigger. So, can play Azusa. Play two more lands. Next turn Nissa can be quite powerful, and then Fierce Empath can help find a finisher. Don't have any fetch lands in place, so probably no point in getting the Green Warden to let us replay lands out of the graveyard. So we'll look for something different, maybe an Ulamog, who knows. So yeah, I'll play Nissa. Can untap my lands, and I'll attack for three first, since her point's probably not going to double block. And then I can still play Empath. And what do we want to find? Yeah, Ulamog seems good. And play a tapped Florahedron. Alright, so next turn if Nissa survives we can play Ulamog. A Ranger class is not gonna change that. Amara hits Nissa for three, that's fine. And double Q to float all our mana. And that's eight, nine. Can tap my land for two more. And cast an Ulamog. And exile. Kind of tempted to just get rid of their white mana, although we see that they have another planes in hand. So, yeah, I think I still go with the two white sources. White mana most likely to have answers for Ulamog in the form of exile based removal. And then. can still plus Nissa. And probably fine to attack. Opponent trades. Pass it back. So the fact our opponent's still playing probably implies that they have an answer to Ulamog. Yasharn can find a couple more lands. And then we would love to draw another Curve Topper here, but Ulamog might get the job done. Alright, so our opponent concedes after all. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Xenothar, a Guild Kingpin, and my hand is looking okay. Druid class to gain a bit of life. And then Harmonize to refuel helps me hit my land drops to get up to Immortal Sun. At least that's the plan. Ooh, an Oracle of Moldaya is exciting. So I can play Azusa, no counterspell to worry about.
But we might see something in response to the trigger here. All right. So the fact that we actually had a Druid class in play was a little bit counterproductive because that put a trigger on the stack, which meant our opponent could actually respond to my land drop, which normally is not the case. So I can't play another land out. But that's fine. Also might have wanted to save Evolving Wilds to shuffle once we play Oracle, so I might have been better off playing Recovery first. So I can play Oracle, but now there is the risk of a counter spell. So I think I'd rather get Harmonize countered. It does not. Didn't think I'll need Ambush. Okay, so... Next turn I can maybe try playing Oracle. Would I like to draw Nyx Bloom Ancient? Sure, why not? So no need to scry. Could have also leveled up Druid class instead of playing Explorer. Would have been fine too. Step one could be to play Nyx Bloom, although I wouldn't have a ton of mana left afterwards necessarily. Don't think I need Ren and Seven, especially when Immortal Sun's in hand. So let's scry away Ren and Seven first. See if there's more lands on top before doing anything else. Tranquil Thicket, I guess, is still worth playing. And then could go for Azusa here, play a couple more lands, and then maybe next turn go for Nyx Bloom Ancient. Oh, yes. And, uh, sure, play Mortal Sun too, why not? Resolves. And am I safe to attack? I probably am, but on the off chance that there's some flash creature here, I'll stay back. So your opponent's just letting us combo off here. Not sure what they're up to, but I'm not complaining. There's no greater feeling than playing lands for free off the top of your deck. Ramen Up Excavator I would like to draw, which I could maybe accomplish with Deck of Many Things. Pretty likely to do so. Could have tried to play Nyx Bloom first to make more mana, but can't really go wrong here. Does your opponent finally have a counter spell? Maybe it was a 6 mana counter? Nope. So we get to activate. Draw two. Cogla on top. But let's go with Excavator. And then I can replay my fetch land a few times. Another land on top. And uh can still level up my Druid class for one more land drop. So our opponent's just letting us have our fun, which I appreciate. And uh, that's probably good for now. Do I want to animate my lair for two? Sure. And then might be safe to attack now. Opponent hasn't been doing much. Opponent gives us the good game. And they explode. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Yarok the Desecrated. And my hand is okay. Five lands is actually a good number. And then we'll need to find a couple more lands along the way to eventually ramp out 
of Warring Clank's Voice of Hunger. Android class can gain a bit of life in the process. Multani, also a good curve topper. Playing Forest first could be relevant if we draw on Nissa. But it's not super uh, important. Alright, so we'd love land number six next turn, otherwise we're just leveling Druid class. And then a fetch line to go with the Green Warden would be perfect. The Rex Sage destroys Druid class, that's okay. And uh, probably Multani over Green Warden, given that Green Warden doesn't do much for me at the moment. So next turn we can see Yarok, Timeless Witness gets back, Druid class, doesn't seem very important, so I'll just hit for 6, play Green Warden instead. Could also draw with Enclave, which is certainly an option. Maybe it is better if we want to try and get Vorinclax out. Sure. Probably should have started there to maybe grow Multani by one more. Alright, so next turn there's a chance I can Vorinclex if we draw land. If they destroy Multani without exiling, I wouldn't be too upset because we can just bring it back and replay the lands thanks to Azusa. And uh, yeah, get to smash for eight, play Vorinclex. And Scarab God shouldn't be too threatening. I suppose if her opponent has a way of killing Multani and then bringing it back with Scarab Gods, they could punish me for tapping out, but then they would also be punished by Vorinclex's ability. And I guess now Timeless Witness might not be as effective, but they need a removal in the first place. Ah, opponent is going to tap out for two turns, basically, with uh, Vorinclex. Does have Death Touch. But yeah, that's enough for a concession. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Nissa of Shadowed Bows. And what do we think of our Nissa opening hand? Looks okay. I'll try it. And then we want to try and play as many forests as possible. Nissa, maybe a bit of a number with Lotus Field. but we should be able to make it work. Lotus Field can be a good way to put some uh, lands in the graveyard to then replay by sacrificing them. So it has that synergy going for it. Ooh, Cultivator Colossus could be fun. Do need some more lands in hand for that to reach its full potential. Right, time for Azusa. Into a couple more lands. And then next turn we can play Nissa. Beanstalk for ramp. Opponent more of a traditional ramp deck that has fewer lands, doesn't rely on playing extra lands, but might have some sorceries to put those lands in play. So I want to play Nissa, keeping as many forests as possible untapped. I guess we won't be able to really. Uh, cast anything else here. Behold, nature's true power. Attack. I guess untapping Lotus Fields would have been an option. 
think that still leaves us a little short of uh, actually casting anything else. But the fact that it is hexproof gives it built-in protection. So time for Nissa of Shadowed Bows. The, the Menace Lands can pressure our Nissa. Opponent just untapping for mana. Maybe a one mana discard or removal spell. Takes out my snow covered forest. Yeah, given that I didn't have anywhere to spend my green mana last turn, there was no real reason to animate a forest. But that's okay. Still in a pretty comfortable spot. Ooh, Excavator. Don't have a fetch land, but thanks to that Lotus Field, there's plenty of lands we can replay. So let's do that. And then I can either play Colossus or Thorn Mammoth. There's nothing to fight with Mammoth yet. But Colossus also wouldn't provide any value, so kind of a tough call. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Gotta keep potential sweeper effects in mind. I will never give up. Yeah, I think uh Maybe Thorn Mammoth is fine for now. They all have odd mana costs in case of an extinction event, so that's not really the deciding factor. So Nissa on 7 loyalty. Pretty close to an ultimate. Opponent could still minus Nissa if they have another fetch land, maybe. Or a ramp card to put lands in play. On four loyalty right now. It's just gonna untap a lands for six mana and a noxious gear hulk. Decent answer to Thorn Mammoth. Scavenger grounds for maybe some graveyard hate. So I guess we'll start with Colossus and see what's next. Let's keep it going. Alright, Cry also quite useful here, but it's gonna resolve after we put all the lands in play. And an Oracle of Moldaya is an excellent curve topper finale. Can probably end the game, but I'm kind of interested in just playing Oracle and playing more lands out. Is that greedy? Okay. And then this I can untap. And what do we want to untap? Could untap my fetch land so I can sack it to shuffle and keep going, but Green Warden would be a reasonable draw too. I guess we already have Excavator, so it's a bit redundant. Oh, let's try it. And then I could send both at Nissa alongside maybe Excavator Azusa. Make sure she dies. And if they block the fetch lands, there's a chance I sacrifice it here. If they block Excavator, then drawing the Green Warden would be beneficial. So we can keep the fetch land dream alive. So yeah, damage happens. And then I probably won't fetch. Nissan 8 loyalty will need to be answered this turn. Who is Cute Swarm? Cultivator Colossus does have Trample, but that could buy them a lot of time. So opponent gets a copy, 
could see another ramp spell, make even more copies. And I guess if we ultimate Nissa with a Trampling Colossus, then uh, that should be game over. Connoisseur does not find anything in our hands, which is empty. Okay, I guess the Nissa ultimate is warranted. Colossus at 3838. And then making sure there's no shuffle effects remaining. I guess we can still activate Hashup Oasis to pump for three. And that should just about do it. And our opponent packs it in. Not enough toughness to survive this attack. All right. Well, we got to see most of the deck in action. Even got to ultimate some Planeswalkers, which is always fun. So yeah, can't complain, this Azusa deck is just incredibly powerful and should be able to compete with the top tier decks in the Historic Brawl meta, even though we didn't face many, so that's also an advantage that Azusa isn't deemed powerful enough to be matched against some of those other decks, which I guess for now just means you get to have some pretty easy wins and the deck can still be adjusted slightly. For instance, at the top end, I did not include Crater Hoof Behemoth, which could be a fine finisher if you're looking for a game ender, but for the most part, I haven't had any difficulties closing out games once I generate a ton of mana. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.